Welcome back to the 9mm Ammo Quest, where I'm testing all sorts of ammo to see what performs best in a 3-inch barrel pistol. Not concerned about 4 inches or longer, which is what most ammo tests and, and what the manufacturers usually quote their specifications from. When they rate their ammo and you see the velocity print on the box, that's usually from a 4-inch or even longer barrel. These little 3-inch barrel pistols that everybody's carrying in their pockets now uh, or in their waistbands, these usually cannot deliver that much velocity as a four inch barrel can and so that changes the way the ammo performs now today's test is brought to you courtesy of one of my viewers who uh, had some of this ammo and wanted to send it in this is federal classic high shock this is the old stuff and um i i wouldn't have bought this to test because i just don't think it's going to do that well because this has been around so long that this may, I haven't Googled, so forgive me if I get this wrong, but this may have been invented and brought to market before there were three inch barrel pistols for all I know, or at least before the pocket nines were common. So I really doubt this was designed to work well with a three inch barrel, probably really needs the four inch in order to do well. But hey, a viewer sent it to me, he asked me to test it, and so here it is, and thank you very much for your donations. Uh, all you guys who have donated ammo are really helping the Ammo Quest out. Cause this, well, you know, I mean, it's expensive stuff. So this really helps. Uh, I am going to put this to the test. We're trying to meet the FBI or IWBA specifications for bullet penetration, which is a minimum of 12 inches and a maximum of 18 inches through ballistic gel, through ballistic gel by itself and also through denim covered gel. So that's that's what my numbers and that's what I'm looking for are uh, understood. We're not the FBI and we're not concerned about law enforcement requirements, like whether it can blast through a door or a, a windshield or something and still meet those specifications not concerned about that just looking for general basic penetration capability 12 inches of ballistic gel has been established as the minimum necessary in order to be able to puncture a body bust through bones hit reach and destroy the vital organs from any angle and f whether or not you know if they're pointing a gun at you their arms are blocking their vitals and that 12 inch minimum would let us get even through an arm and still be able to hit so that's why we that's why we go with 12 inches doesn't mean 12 inches through a body it means 12 inches through ballistic gel which means we have enough power to get through the body to where we need this is professional ballistic gel same stuff used by the fbi and prepared in the same way that they use it and this is iwba specification denim so we're going to do this right and we're going to head out to the range and do this right now Well, the high shock penetration is surprisingly good. Not quite to our specifications, not exactly what we wanted, but look, the shortest bullet came in at 11 and a half and two at 11 and three quarters. Then we had one at 12 and a half and one at 14 and a quarter. And 14 and a quarter is pretty darn good. The 12 and a half met our specification. The other three didn't, but they came really about as close as you could expect without meeting it. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to give it a pass here and go ahead and conduct the denim test. All right, through the denim, we had some struggles. First of all, three of the bullets went sideways, went out the top. They didn't necessarily over penetrate, although I don't know whether they would have or not because the bullets were lost. They didn't stay in the block. That's not to say that they over penetrated out the back. They exited, like I said, out the top or out the side. And uh, because of that, they, they may have kept going. They may have over penetrated. They may have under penetrated. We don't really know. That's really disappointing. So I can only really base the results on the two that we did get and two that we got one of them stopped at 10 and three quarters and the other one plugged with denim failed to expand but did stop at 15 inches so it didn't over penetrate but that means that out of the seven recovered bullets i've got four that under penetrated below our limit and the 10 and three quarters you know i can overlook 11 and three quarters that's fine but 10 and three quarters is getting a little bit far to to uh, stretch that metric and then we had one that did totally fail to expand and knowing that you know even from federal their newer bullets like the hst perform much more consistently I, I gotta say this isn't what i was looking for the recovered high shocks yeah you know what 
if you want to be picky and say, well, you know, they all kind of got beat to crud and they don't look like an HST, that's true. They did. They do. I mean, look at this thing. It's, I don't know that that's that confidence inspiring. But on the other hand, that's a great big mushroom of lead there. That expanded, made a, a big intimidating hole through the, through the gel. So, eh, look, they're not competitive with modern bullets. That's for sure. Modern, newer bullets expand much cleaner, more consistently. They don't get clogged with denim like that one did. And they don't go around dropping pieces behind them like a old British sports car, you know, driving down the freeway and pieces just falling off. That's kind of what we had here. This is weight shedding. Sometimes people think that, oh, fragmenting is good. You know, it'll give you more damage. That's not fragmenting. This isn't expanding the wound cavity. This is just pieces actually falling off. So it stays in the permanent damage track and, and doesn't add to any wounding. All it does is uh, reduce your overall ultimate penetration because it sheds weight on the way through. So overall, Look, not the worst. Uh, surprisingly good in the bear gel for the age of the bullet and knowing that it probably was never intended to be fired from a three inch pistol. Still not good enough. They underpenetrated. And when it came to the denim, I really only got these two back. One of them, the lead part looks great. The copper jacket looks like it really did not enjoy the process. And then we had one that completely clogged and grossly overpenetrated. Okay, wrap up on the High Shock Federal Classic. You know, classic is a word that we use, we, we really use it in cars, right? You know, you get a classic 67 muscle car or something like that, and we have fond memories, and they're great and all, but when you put them up against the modern car, there's usually a lot lacking. I think that's the situation with the Federal Classics here. First of all, I'm very impressed with how they did through the bear gel even though many of them did not meet the 12 inch minimum I wanted, they're really close. And I guess it's a case of expectations. I wasn't expecting much and I got much more than I was expecting. So not too bad. Uh, denim was a disappointment. We had a, a notable under penetrator. So I am going to say this is not a great choice. Uh, it's not the worst choice in the world. It did okay but it's not a good choice. When we've got uh, other bullets out there like the Critical Defense, the Corbon DPX, and the HSTs that all are performing outstandingly well, um, I don't see a good reason to settle for a mediocre performer. So in that context, not the worst. It's okay, but there are better out there. Thanks to my viewer who donated this ammo to me. I would not have tested this otherwise, uh, so I appreciate getting a chance to do that. Thanks to all the viewers who have donated ammo to support the Ammo Quest here. I appreciate it, and thanks for watching, and hit subscribe. You'll be notified when the next video is posted.